Back then when we were slaves, they would call us boy, like, hey boy, you know, go get those cows, boy, or boy. So the cow, cow boy is actually referring to a black ranch hand. One, two, three, freedom is down. I like to say it's a secret, because nobody knows about it until you walk down the street and you're like, wait, what happened to the sidewalk? And then somewhere in the horizon, you might see a six foot tall horse trotting down the street. You're like, wait, we still in LA? Yeah, we still in LA. Compton to be exact. The sun peeks through the palm trees and the roosters crow about 6.30 every morning. This is Keenan Abercrombie's favorite time. A lot of people like basketball, from like football, you know. For us, it was horses. The city of Compton is made up of four main communities, one of them being Richland Farms, an area zoned for agriculture use as far back as 1888. A hundred years later, Keenan's aunt, Maisha Akbar, purchased the plot of land and started a nonprofit. So we all grew up under the Compton Junior Posse, which is after school program from ages eight to 18. We teach them how to ride horses, but we also teach them responsibility responsibilities like feeding, watering, and most importantly, cleaning the stalls. And it'd be, it'd be funny to me sometimes because the kids are coming like, ew, it's poop, and we're like, yeah, but it's just grass. And they're like, no, we're like, no, it's just grass. It may not seem like much, but those experiences, those responsibilities, literally saved Keenan and his cousin Randy. Most of the time, bad things happen because you don't have nowhere to go. So you're just kind of roaming around, you get into trouble, and and then you end up in a grave or in a jail cell or something. Randy and Keenan admit their Aunt Maisha did her best, but she couldn't always shield the kids in her group from what goes on outside the farm's gates. And then fast forward, like her son got shot, my cousin, and he's alive to this day. But that was obviously traumatic for the family and stuff, so she was faced with a decision to stay or leave. And she chose to stay, because that's how our family is. We always like want to be more so for the people and help and give back to the community. I wonder will it ever change? Been praying all my life for better days. When Randy got older, he left the farm to pursue a music career. But when his aunt had to retire due to health reasons, Randy came back and talked his cousins and friends into running the farm under a new name, the Compton Cowboys. It's really about paying it forward to save more lives, because I, we, a lot of us probably wouldn't be here today without a ranch. The decision to come back only strengthened the program. After the Compton Cowboys were featured in this Guinness beer commercial, they received national attention on talk shows and news outlets. It also became a springboard for Randy's music career. It's working like crazy. Like I ended up working with Dr. Dre, who produced my debut single. It's called Colorblind. At, uh, the Grammy Museum and the Recording Academy just pulled up a whole exhibit about it. Cowboy boots and bolo ties are not something you will see the Compton Cowboys sporting. Instead, they choose to sport a positive influence to kids who look just like them. And people judge us like, oh, they're not real cowboys, they're just doing it for the camera. No, we're actually real cowboys, and we actually do teach the kids how to be cowboys and cowgirls. From the farmlands of Compton, I'm John Bartell.